Getting up close and intimate. Totally not taboo with Tracy. Celebrating sexual positivity both in and outside the bedroom. Hello again, learner lovers, and welcome to Totally Not Taboo with Tracy. This is where we get to talk about everything about sex and sexuality that is termed taboo and we are going to dispel some myths. In the studio with me today is Josh Muller and he wow. is a bodywork and tantric therapist. Welcome Josh into the studio. I know that you're super excited to be here. How's it Trace? Uh, I'm actually really excited. This is a, a bit of wish fulfillment for me because uh I'd love to be on a podcast, and here I am on a podcast with the headphones on and the microphone <laughs> in front of my face. So, yeah, this this is going to be a mecca. Well, you look super cool. Yeah. Um, Josh, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to our audience. And, yeah, let's go for it. Let's have a good old chat. Sounds great. Um, I'll give a little brief history of myself, and then we can get into it. Um, so I, I started my career as a – professional cage fighter, which uh, doesn't pay very well, unfortunately, or fortunately in this case, because um, I found sports massage as a way of supplementing my income. And um, massage was always something that I was interested in, something I was good at. Um, uh, from a very young age, I'd, uh, I had very stressed out parents, especially my dad, and I'd massage his shoulders on a, on a Friday night. And and when we'd have guests over on a Friday night, everyone would get a chance for a massage. And I picked that, uh, picked up that love again um, when I was about 24. Actually, I'm not totally sure. In 2014, so around seven years ago. And um, my journey took me um, to sensual massage. Um, I quit a job that I was doing that I really didn't like. It was really uh, turning my life upside down. Mm. And um, on my journey of self-growth, and uh, the, the journey really began when I started doing sensual massage. Um, and uh, more recently, I, I wanted to um, find a, a way to do my work that was uh, more meaningful, more, uh, more breadth and more depth, um, especially in the, in the space of healing and self-healing. Mm. And so um, that drew me towards intuitive talk therapy, uh, body work, and... Uh, tantric and sensual massage. Wow. So that's that me. sounds fascinating. I just want to go back to the um the kickboxing. What do you call it? The cage fighting. Cage fighting. Where did the touch come from? Were you getting all like touchy with the guards and what? <laughs> <laughs> um no, I mean, you know, no, when, <laughs> when you're a professional fighter, your body gets beaten up a lot. Right. And so sports massages it's great. And the thing is, I, I, I'd, I'd uh, been for sensual massages um, uh, through my 20s, my, mm. from very early on. Uh, my relationship with, with sex and sexuality was, was um, quite a dark one. Um, uh, I was raised religious. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a Jewish background. Uh, I have a new, a new love for my Judaism, which is a whole other story. But the way I was raised wasn't with... Um, in terms of religion wasn't with love. It was more with like rules and mm. this is the things you can't do. And so my, my view of sexuality was um, quite uh, badly distorted and, and I had a very low self image. Mm. Um, and part of that, um, part of my release was sensual massage. But um, in those early days, it brought me um, into a cycle of, of shame and reactivity where I'd, I'd go for a sensual massage and, and I, I wouldn't feel so good about myself. And so when I started doing sensual massage, I realized that there are other people out there like, like me who, who will come for an escape and then, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not healing, it's harming. Mm -hmm. And so that was for me, part of the, part of the shift. Um, when I decided that, that I, ne I needed to spend my time, use my gift of massage to help heal people and uh, help um, people heal themselves. What was your question? I, I forgot now. <laughs> Don't worry. It was really a joke in the beginning okay, anyway. <laughs> so, Josh, um, let's continue with your first um, experience of sensual massage that, that really got you into the work and uh, how it came about. Sure, yeah. sure. So, um, like I said, um, I'd been I'd been receiving central massages on and off for for many years. So, so 
What did that entail? Sorry to interrupt Oh, right. You. So uh, a central massage is um, or a, a classic. That you received. That I received. So a classic central massage would be uh, a full body massage done with um, Swedish technique, like mm. the Swedish massage technique. Um, central massages are generally slower. They're not as uh, deep tissue as, as I perform them. Mm. Um and then there's um uh, you know there's a lot of nudity and there's uh, there's the, the sensual nature of it is that there is a body to body technique where the therapist lies naked on top of you um, with oil uh, and then uh, it um, when you get turned over it's it's a sensual uh, lingam massage which is um, can I swear on your podcast. Yes, you can. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so it's like um, a lingam massage refers to the penis and the testicles uh, and the anus and the, um, basically all the erogenous zones. And um, the, for when the, in a sens sensual massage, that's to um, to orgasm. Right. Um, and I I'd received many uh, massages over the years that um, – so many that I knew what, what I liked and what I didn't like, what was good and what was bad. Uh, and, and it normally boiled down not to the technique. It normally boiled down to the therapist, mm. um, the intention that someone comes into into a massage with. So that's something that's right. really important to me right. is what's my intention as a, as a therapist. Mm. Um, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of um, people um, in the industry who are there for um, – they have no other way to make money or they're – um, come from, an, from an, a background of abuse. And so the work sort of um, perpetuates that cycle um, mm. of abuse. Whereas for me, um, com coming from a place of, of healing, um, and, and I'm not the only one, of course, there's plenty of people who, um, you know, plenty of tantric therapists who do the work from a place of love. And it really, mm -hmm. it, that intention really makes, makes, I think, all the difference mm. in the world. Sure. So, so my, um, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. about. <laughs> so my so the first time I did a sensual massage, uh, I uh, oh I, the first time I gave a sensual massage, I'd been doing sports massage for a long time. Mm -hmm. Sensual massage was something I'd I'd thought about, um, but it's something I'd I'd never I'd never quite done. I was I was still living in fear. I was, um, uh, you know, not confused about my own sexuality, but. Um, confused about um, what it means to give a man a sensual massage. Yes. Most of my clients are men. Right. I have a lot of female clients and couples, and that's a whole nother story, but most of my clientele are men. Mm. And so to, um, to, to create a situation in which I'm giving of myself intimately with a man, as a straight man, mm. um, was a big hurdle for me to, to jump over. Um, mm. But... I did it. It was a beautiful experience. Um, I really, I really felt deeply connected to myself in in that experience and uh, myself as a giver. Mm. And I, uh, I resigned from a job that was crushing me. I resigned the very next day, and I haven't looked back since. Sure. So there's a lot of information you're giving me here. Yeah. A fortune. And obviously, I want to pick it apart because, you know, that's what I like to do. Um. So I just want to clarify something. When you would sure. go for the essential massages, you would get a happy ending, right? That's right. Okay. So would you call that a taboo? Well, definitely coming from a religious background with the guilt and shame. Yeah, definitely. I mm. mean, um, I'd uh, I'd say I'd say that there was a um, a lot of taboo around it. That like uh, I was taught uh, I was taught as a child that masturbation was wrong it was evil mm. it was spilling the seed um and that 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 re that moment in my life really defined my early sexuality because right. i was a young horny teenager yeah I masturbate all the time yeah and um so you know I, that was sort of like a perpetuation of that taboo yeah um but you know ta taboo I, I find it really interesting there's like um I think there was a study done in the UK mm. a few years ago. Don't quote me on the statistics because I'm just going to make up a number. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as I remember, it was more than half of the people um, mm. responded. Um, the 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 uh, the question the questionnaire was around uh, uh, normative sex practices. So um, what they defined as normative sex practices mm. was like you know 
to uh, man, woman, straight sex, mm. uh, heteronormative mm. sort of a sexual activity. And most people, it turned out, had kinks and fantasies and fetishes and, and acted out in ways that were quote unquote non normative, mm-hmm. more people than not. So it, it like sort of threw into question. Um, you know, what is what does normative mean? What is what is taboo? Mm. And I think I think taboo is so tightly linked to the shame that that we all feel around our sexuality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting because um our sexuality is really um the essential expression of who we are. Absolutely. And yet we are not allowed to we are we are forbidden to express who we really are. Can I, can I jump in on that? Please. I, 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 think, I think that, um, you know, my work is, is two-part. Um, mm. the, the, one, the one really strong focus is on um, self-healing from like an emotional perspective, emotional wounding, trauma, childhood trauma, whether like physical abuse and sexual abuse, but also the more subtle kind of trauma like neglect, mm. emotional neglect, being ignored by a parent, a parent living vicariously through a child, that sort of mm. thing. And um, even if those things are sort of quote unquote taken care of, mm. like they're like there's there's a, there's healing being done there, or not as much trauma to 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 work through. We we all have this extra shame and guilt and self judgment around our sexuality. Mm. Like that's it's the same thing, but it's over and above whatever other trauma we have. And it seems to me, to my mind, um, to be the the one that's hardest to to break that. The mm. cycle of shame around our sexuality. Mm. Um, we we really we really do have um, like this this uh, unnatural obsession with what other people do in their bedrooms uh, in terms of judging and mm. yeah yeah. So I, I find I find this I find the wor- the work that we do is um, part of it is is the liberation of that. It's like so, Josh, take me through a massage. I mean, I have had the privilege of having your hands on my body. Um, you know, I have to try everything. Absolutely. Um, so, and I had an amazing experience with you. Um, really, very sensual and uh, liberating experience as well. Um, but I haven't been, a, I haven't had the privilege of doing any sexual healing mm. as such that you're talking about right. now. And I, and I believe that you've also taken on more of a deeper experience you, yeah. you give more of a deep experience to your clients now yeah. so take me through that kind of um give me an example sure, of, of sure. how you do that so so let me just um preface by saying um there are sort of two two ways in um to sensual massage to, to tantric massage to intuitive talk therapy mm. um there's the physical experience so a typical physical experience would be um Okay, I'll get I'll get to that. The, the The physical experience is the one side, and it might lead you to then say, "Okay, now that I've experienced this physical pleasure, this um, receiving, this gift of receiving, I'd like to explore my emotions more deeply." Mm. Okay, so that's one one way in, and it can also happen the other way around. So people will come to me and say, um, "You know, I'm, I want to work through these emotional problems, and through the course of our work." Um, their sexuality comes up and it becomes something that they want to explore deeper uh, through Tantra or through sensual massage. So it's, it can be the emotional experience first that leads to the physical and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we started, the the ad read was something like, meet you where you're at. Mm-hmm. And I just, I was like, that's exactly it. That's that's the, the reason I do it though in those two directions is that wherever you're at, wherever you are in your self-healing journey, that's where I want to meet you. Lovely. Okay, so a typical um, sensual massage experience uh, would work as follows. Um, uh, someone will contact me asking for a sensual massage, and I want to immediately find out a little bit more about them, their background, what, what's bringing them to me, mm. why, what, are they, what are they looking for out of the experience, um, and uh, to get a clear sense of people's expectations, hopes, mm-hmm. and desires, and most importantly, uh, most importantly boundaries. Right, really, that's very really important. Um, you know, everybody has has their own their own boundaries. Mm. Not everyone's boundaries are the same, and not everyone's looking for the same thing, mm. um, physically or emotionally. But uh, everyone, I believe, um, that's in search of some kind of healing will then find 
the path that is right for them. Right. So once I've established where we are in terms of the where, where my client is at in terms of what they're looking for, uh, a typical uh, physical experience looks like uh, a full body massage. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, that includes body body work. So body work, a body work treatment is, um, if you think of sports massage as dealing with the physical symptoms of, say, a sports injury, mm. it's quite a narrow focus. Yeah, body work deals with the same physical manifestations, but with the understanding that the the underlying cause isn't the run that I went on or the the weights that I lifted, mm. but a, a deeper, more emotional cause. So the anxiety that you feel, depression. Um, stresses, daily stresses um, that come up, your your body goes through a response, a physical response, mm. like a flight or a fight or flight response. Mm-hmm. Your body's filled with adrenaline, norepinephrine, and um, cortisol, which mm-hmm. are the stress hormones, um, preparing your body to either run away or to stand and fight. And your body doesn't know that actually it was just an email that you received that right. gave you this 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 response. So body work is. Uh, going in with that intention and that understanding and working through the the the, the knots in the back and the neck the, the the range of motion issues the, that sort of stuff okay. okay so that's the first half of uh, of the treatment then is that the information that you get from the client before yeah okay yeah. so so typically um if we're it would sometimes right? typically um if we're doing a if i'm beginning a long term process with someone mm. then the first session we're just going to sit and talk for an hour and, and I'm going to just listen. Mm. I just want to hear where you are and where you're at. If you're coming um, just for the sensual massage experience, um, then then I'll get a little bit of that background, but I won't, we won't go into as 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 much of, of a – we won't go all the way into the depths of, of that. That, that, that stuff is, uh, is more for the long-term process. But, but still, before every first session, if you've never had a session with me, mm. we're going to talk. We're going to talk for 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. The longer the better, mm. I believe. Um, but again, meeting people where they're at means that some people are coming to me, their expectation is that they're going to have a, a sensual massage and a physical release. Mm. And so I'm going to provide that that symptom relief, that mm. pain management, um, because it's really important. Um, when you're stuck in the symptoms, it's really hard to see the cause. It's really hard to see a way out. Mm. So that symptom relief gives you that, gives people space mm mentally and physically to then if they want to explore deeper it, it makes it a little bit easier okay. so um after the body work portion of the treatment uh we move to the yoni or the lingam massage mm-hmm. so uh yoni is the vagina mm-hmm. okay and all that all that that beautiful beautiful thing entails yeah. uh so all I the just erogenous want, zones yeah so sans, it, yoni is sanskrit that's right yes. ancient um holy word for uh that the hindus the hindus used to use Correct. um to just to another word for for vulva and yoni um vulva, vulva and, and vagina. vagina yes and then lingam is the yes. sanskrit script word um for the male genitalia Correct. um lingam how come there's how come there's no good words for genitalia they're all like they all just sound Gross. I mean, I really. <laughs> can we have some beautiful words? Can we use the word "pussy" because that's a beautiful word. My, Is it? My, fr- my friend Tamara uses that word, and yeah, I just love the way she says it. it's beautiful. Anyway, uh, and then what's for 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 a penis? Um, penis. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually talking to somebody the other day that um, a lot of words that are used to describe the penis mm-hmm. are actually cr- quite. Um, derogatory when describing a man so yeah. it's either a, he's a prick yeah. or he's a cock or he's a, a an, you know yeah. a dick exactly <laughs> so that was quite funny for me. and amazing yeah. Uh, yeah we're all being primed to think that the genitals are something dirty yeah what's up with that that's also true yeah so um so we we start with the yoni massage with the, the talk then we move to the body oh, yes. work right. and now we're on to the yoni massage i'll just describe um it's the same process for a man yes. and for a woman um th- there are of course differences between men and women yes <laughs> am i allowed to say that <laughs> okay anyway um there yeah are today with between, pronouns we don't uh, know what we're allowed but we're learning uh we are learning we are learning um, and I'll I'll call anyone anything they ask. Exactly. I love all people. Um, 
So the yoni massage um, begins uh, and ends the same way. We we start with breath work, mm -hmm. okay, and this is very um, very important uh, aspect. Um, one one of the one of the things about sensual and tantric massage mm -hmm. that I like to emphasize is that the practice is about um, uh, witnessing your inner world. Mm -hmm. So it, what 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 we do in the beginning is before I can understand where my emotions come from, I want to feel my body. I want to mm -hmm. feel my physicality. So when I'm breathing, I want to, I want to be present, grounded in right. that breathing exercise. Yes. And then as, as myself as a therapist, as I'm moving up your body and I'm working on you physically, I want you to feel everything that I'm doing. Right. Right. So the Yoni massage um, is all about um, building sexual arousal. Right. Um, and the idea isn't for orgasm, right. especially at the beginning. Sexual energy is really powerful. Um, and the more we build it up and spread it throughout the body, the more powerful it becomes. So um, for, a, for a sensual massage, um, orgasm is okay because it's physical release. Um, so if we're doing symptom management, orgasm is, is great. But generally speaking, in a tantric session, I'll bring you to the edge of orgasm and, and then hold you there. And so from a physical perspective, you're learning, say, expanded orgasm practice, yes, yes. multiple orgasms. Um, breakthrough orgasms, which is a which is something I really like to talk about. It's a it's a really big one. A lot of women um, have never had an orgasm in their mm. life, and I believe strongly that there is an an emotional an underlying emotional cause that is outside of the the physical space, mm. and that bringing those things together, the physical and the emotional, can really be profoundly uh, impactful on people's lives. And I've I've had a number of of, of women in my practice that have had a breakthrough orgasm and they cry and they cry yes. and they release and hug and cry. And it's this most beautiful, beautiful thing. And someone will say after a session, thank you so much. Mm. Um, you reminded me that I'm human, Wow. that I'm a woman sure. and that I deserve to, I deserve happiness and I deserve pleasure. Sure. And for me, that's, that's ultimately, um, ultimately what I'm doing, trying, so trying to do. Which leads me, um, well, before I get on to my next um, question, statement, um, I'm going to just mention here that while we are talking about bodies, yeah. we all know that summer bodies are built in winter, um, but that can easily be, is, oh, sorry, but that can be easier said than done. So why not join fitness expert Mo on the Health Fix with Mo for an inspirational weekly fitness podcast show for fitness novices? Mo chats to the best in local fitness, in, in local health and fitness experts in an effort to get information to help you achieve your aesthetic fitness and health goals. Subscribe on YouTube, listen on any good po podcast platform or find it on www.yourmedia.co.za your media hashtag where you are so josh that's awesome um but before yes. can i can i comment on your ad read it was really good yes please it was magical um i have a personal trainer his name's rob yeah i don't like calling him a personal trainer because he's way more than that um he's a real expert i I just wanted to put a pin in this because if I forget, I'll kick myself. But if Mo's looking for um, guests for his show, oh, great. Should, uh, contact, I should put him in contact with Rob. Oh, excellent. Thanks. Back, Thanks to, back to today. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, that's what podcasts are all about. Exactly. Just like Connecting shouting people. Out, shouting people out. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. Um, so now we spoke about the emotional release that is very possible during a tantric massage when you include the the yoni. What about attachments? How you know what happens when a woman feels such enormous uh, emotional release and uh, that she's not feeling when she's with her partner? Mm. Um, how do you handle the the connection that might actually develop on a deep level with you? Yeah. So uh, there's a few things to say about this. One um, is that as, as my work has developed and as I've gained more experience, I've learned 
the ability and the necessity to mm. set up my own boundaries emotionally that I'm not flirting I'm, mm. I'm, I'm professional um, and and that's that seems to help a lot and and in the in the past there would be lines crossed because mm. I wasn't aware of or able to hold my own boundary mm. um, the key focus for me when it comes to attachment is that where's that attachment going if I'm seeing uh, a client and that att- and I'm helping them move that attachment from maybe a focus on me or a partner or, or outside, whatever it is, I want that attachment to move inward. Mm. I want, I want someone to be attached to themselves. That's, that's more important. And, and, and um, that's, you know, the focus of my work. Um, the tagline is guided self healing. Mm. And that's what it's all about. It's about you, you have the power to heal yourself and I'm just a guide. So, um, and, and the other thing about attachment, as far as like, um, within therapy, you know, this as a, as an intimacy coach, you know, that, um, the connection you build with your clients, when it's a strong connection, it helps, it helps them, um, to, they, it helps them to feel like they've got someone in their corner, like they've got someone who's got their back and it's, it's extra motivation. Mm. It's like, um, like when you have a really strong partnership, like I do with my wife, um, I have someone who holds me holds me to account mm. and I have someone who I hold to account and that dynamic as a ther- therapist client is the same thing. It's, it's building a connection where, uh, or an attachment where the client feels like that I'm holding them accountable mm. to themselves. Yeah. You know, they don't have to get better for me. That's, that's the, if, if someone's trying to get better for me, I've done something wrong and mm, I need to, I need to go back. And, but of course, to, I have to be empathetic to the fact that people are coming to me um, with a context where, generally speaking, their connection, their relationship with themselves, with themselves is um, uh, it's 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 a broken connection. Mm. It's a it's a, a small uh, a connection that that requires a lot of love and attention, mm. and so that attachment can happen. It can happen that someone will um, misplace feelings um, that that. Are, Feelings that are meant for themselves, they mm. place it on me. But yeah, the the idea is to, um, without judgment, mm. to hold a hold a boundary and to create a safe space that, mm. if someone needs to express that they have this, they have a feeling, whatever that feeling is, then they then they should feel uh, safe to express it. Mm. I get it completely because intimacy is really about connection. Yeah, and a lot of people battle with intimacy because they just feel disconnected from themselves 100 yeah. percent, and in part disconnected from their partners and they're seeking some kind of connection that just doesn't exist and that's why they do come to see me yeah. because there's no connection yeah. and, yeah. You, and you, you do the same thing you mm. turn that seeking you mm. turn it inward correct and they connect with themselves that i believe strongly in a thing called unconditional love mm. And the thing about unconditional love is that it starts with you. Hundred um, percent. You you can't help someone else with their uh, oxygen mask until you've put your own oxygen oh, yes. mask on. Oh yes, I always use that uh, analogy. It's the 100%, best. It's the best. It's, it's so works. You know, love is abundant. Mm. If I have unconditional love for myself, I can give my love away freely. Mm. It'll never run out. Absolutely. But if my love is conditional, I love you because you love me. That because is a condition that. If you don't love me, then what? Then where's my love? Now it's 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 broken, right? But if 100%. I love myself, I have that abundance for me. If I if I'm able to build that relationship, it really really yeah. changes the game. And we can be in relation with each other, yes, as long as there's no condition. One hundred percent. Yeah, you can be free because it's not on condition that you then um, owe me something. I think it's something that makes um, friendships really mm. special, as a, not as opposed to, but in contrast to uh, relationships you have with family, mm. is um, there's some underlying uh, condition that you have to be with this person because they're family. You have to yeah. spend time with them because they're family. Whereas friends, the the tacit agreement is, I don't know you. <laughs> we can just stop hanging out if this isn't good for anyone, mm. and it makes it makes it. You're, it means that you're there because you want to be there, yeah. not because you have to be there. True. Yeah. So um, just bringing in a little bit of a mention about your wife. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, she knows how personal 
this and how intimate and how vulnerable you get with your clients, whether they are male or female. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Um, you know, we've both been on a personal growth journey over the last uh, couple of years. And she's always been very supportive of my work. And to be honest, I think she saw um, the therapeutic potential in my work, the the, ex the extent of it before I did. Right. And she never she never pushed me. She just held me to account. And when I said I wanted to do something, she would she would make sure that I did it. She's um, she's brilliant. She's really supportive and wonderful and. I love her so much. She's, yeah, she's a great woman. She's cool. Yeah, yeah. you've met her. That's yeah, right. She's yeah, fantastic. she's pretty cool. Yeah. You wanted to get more into a conversation um, about the, um, not the extended, the expanded orgasm, but about the, um, oh, God, I can't remember what, um, not the multiple orgasm, but. You Those sound last. Pardon? I said those all sound nice. <laughs> yeah. Very hard. Very, I must, very I must difficult. Um, admit. Oh, breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough orgasm. Breakthrough orgasm. Right. Yes. Right. Tell me about that. Okay. So um, I don't want to brag. Oh, come on, Josh. Brag. Before I was a therapist, <laughs> uh, I'd, I've given, I'd given many women their first orgasm. Yes. Um, and for me, the, you know, I, my friends had asked, I'd been asked by friends in the past, you know, how do you give a woman an orgasm? And so I'd say like, okay, well, I like, I personally like going down on women. I really enjoy that. Oral sex. Oral sex. Mm. So I'd ask my friend, do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy doing it? And he'd go, eh, yeah, it's all right. I'm like, okay, that's your first problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not going to, you're not going to help if you, if you're not into it, it's really important. And I think there's, there's, um, I actually think that oral sex is far more intimate than penetrative sex. Sure. Like you're, you're, you're in a much more vulnerable state. Mm. You kind of have to, you, you're in a receiving state and, and that's really difficult for people. Tell me more about that giving and receiving. Cause yeah. I mean, obviously you're giving, right. Um, but yet you tell me you're receiving. Yeah. So, so the thing about giving and receiving the, the there's this um, underlying, uh, idea, subconscious idea that, um, again, it goes back to unconditional love, actually, right? That I only receive because I give. Mm -hmm. And if I don't give, I don't deserve to receive. So I'll, I'll tell clients, you know, during this, during the yoni or the lingam massage, I want you to, you're going to sit with your feet together, knees apart, your hands on your thighs, mm -hmm. palms facing up mm -hmm. in the receiving, in a receiving posture. Don't touch, don't, don't, don't play, don't even fantasize. Stay in the moment. Think about your pleasure and nothing else. And it's extraordinary to see people struggle with that. Mm. Really, really difficult. I've struggled with it myself mm. in the past. The gift of receiving is the gift of unconditional love. Mm. It's, ju it's just receiving. Nothing, there's nothing else going on. Um, and giving, giving is actually it's in a strange way that the same thing I don't give because I'm then going to receive. Right. I need to give, I need to just give, just give the gift of, of uh, let someone else receive some, uh, receive their own pleasure. Right. And that it's, it's really transformative. It's really, really powerful. Um, I also encourage self pleasure practice, which is part of the same thing that um, you're masturbating um, not for release necessarily, mm -hmm because you take your own pleasure very seriously. Mm, mm. This is, this is another back, going back to breakthrough orgasms. Um, um, I'm yet to meet a woman or a man who's never had an orgasm who masturbates regularly. Right. That's just, those things just don't seem to correlate. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And I, I work a lot on the giving and receiving idea because I find, look, I, I don't want to put people into boxes, but I find that women really battle to receive. Mm 
Um, and I'm not quite sure. I mean, I have my own ideas as to why that is. We're so busy giving to everybody else. We don't take time. We almost feel as though we don't deserve to mm -hmm. receive. Um, so in order to really uh, receive, we have to be in our bodies. Yeah. We have to be out of our heads and completely present yeah. in our bodies, which we find hard to Very do. Very difficult. Very difficult. Men also sometimes yeah, definitely. find it difficult to receive. Um, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also in terms of what you were talking about, giving and receiving without uh, an intention without any uh, expectations. Yeah, right, right. Uh, a lot of the time, women are also in their heads in terms of uh, what do I look like? Mm -hmm. um, I can't receive properly in case he sees the muffin tops or the right. cellulite or the stretch. What will he think? Or I'm also running an agenda. Mm -hmm. What will I have to do? back to him what will i have right. to give him in return does this mean i have to give him a blowjob as well mm -hmm. will i have to give him sex as well they don't sometimes understand that this is just um oral sex for my satisfaction for my pleasure and he doesn't actually want anything in return and that's where conversation mm -hmm. i think boundaries consent has yeah. to come in would you agree i i definitely agree it's so funny. The scenario just you're describing is such a typical one of like um, in a say there's a man and a woman and the man is um, performing oral sex. And in his mind, he's thinking about maybe he's thinking about reciprocation. Exactly. Maybe he's thinking about the orgasm, but not the pleasure so much. He's um, the woman sitting there going, like, OK, um, if it's not going to happen, I might fake an orgasm, mm -hmm. right? which I've. In my practice, I've I've said a few times. Listen, don't don't pretend to have one on my account. Mm. If you if you if you think you can have one, let's let's see if you can have one. The th I think I think what's happening is that, um, and I I know you've spoken about this before about women finding their voice, mm. and I find it really interesting because a lot of times uh, the woman will lie, uh, lay and receive, um, and just sort of hope that the guy knows what he's doing which is a disaster, right? And the the reason it's coming about is because there's that lack of that, uh, of finding your own voice, mm -hmm. which comes back again to self-pleasure practice. If you don't know what you like, how are you going to tell someone else what you like? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And also you mentioned self-pleasure versus mm -hmm. the word masturbation. Yeah. Yeah. There is self-pleasure means I'm giving myself pleasure. Yes. I'm taking time um masturbation reminds me of um closed doors mm. hidden corners dark corners yeah. uh you know clandestine kind of dirty behavior yeah. where self-pleasure for me is about being immersed in the pleasure of self yes yes conscious yes, that's it experience Beautiful. and it's not that that what you're describing takes it out of a purely physical experience as well. Yes. You're actually making space for the emotional experience. Exactly. Which is so important. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, Josh, you know, in terms of your own vulnerability mm. in doing this work, how has that affected you? You're also talking about self growth. Um, sure. What do you mean by vulnerability? You so know, can... we. Sh vulnerability for me is not wearing a mask. It's about showing up in your true self. It's about um, really showing up heart, body, and soul. Right. Um, okay. an ego. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm going to give you an example of of where I've become more vulnerable. That'll sound a little bit strange, mm. but before we started, we had um, a setup in a different studio mm. um, and the old me would have just been like, let me make myself as small as possible and just fit into what everything else is going on. And, and don't like, don't worry about me. And I made myself vulnerable. I said like, Oh, uh, can we do it in the studio? And like my soul is like, my, my inner child is like screaming at me. Yeah. Go, go Josh. And my ego is like, no, what are you doing? you got to just relax. you got to just do whatever. And and for me, that that's what you were asking about vulnerability, but also about self-growth is 
where where I've grown the most and where I really want to help people is the ability to show up for myself on a daily basis. Mm. In the small ways, not in the big ways, just the, the small ways, little small steps of showing up for myself. Um, and I've I've recently in the last couple of years found my voice in the bedroom as well. Um, whether whether it's at uh, in a work context or at home, um, being able to uh, fantasize out loud or talk uh, dirty or um, control the situation in a dominating way. Mm. Right? Um, those things used to be very um, a lot scarier for me. Like, mm. like, oh, what if I say this and this person's upset or offended? Or, and now I'm I'm just a lot more comfortable with that. Mm. And it's still difficult. Yeah, it's not easy to do. Once I get started, it becomes easier. But like, the ego is still there and, and still telling me what I'm worth, mm. even though I know I'm worth more yeah. than what my ego has decided. So it's it's that constant battle of um, every day showing up for myself. That's 100%. That for me is the space in which I can be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I love that. Yeah. And you were talk, talking about growth in terms of your work. Um, yeah. Do you think you've covered that or do you want to talk more about that? Sure, let's, we can talk more about that. Um, I can we talk about plant medicine on here? A plant medicine, yeah, sure. How does it affect your work? Um, so in, a, in a few really significant ways, actually, um, and also that is taboo. So we can oh, definitely brilliant. talk about because a lot of people don't understand it. Yeah, and we we could we could sit here for like six hours just talking about yeah, about but, plant um, medicine. So I'll give us more. <laughs> sorry, I assume I assume I'll get invited back. So oh, for sure, so we'll have lots to talk about. So yeah. um. Um, plant medicine refers to uh, different um, uh, different things, uh, um, different uh, substances, uh, naturally occurring substances, and some are made in the laboratory as well, um, that alter your perception and your state of mind um, for a perspective shift. Mm. It's, a, it's a really interesting tool, um, like meditation, very similar right. kind of tool. Um, the uh, analogy would be that uh, the Buddha is sitting on the mountaintop. No, sorry, he sits. Uh, he sits across the across the lake, and a man spends twenty years learning to walk on water so he can reach the Buddha. And he reaches the Buddha and says, um, "I spent twenty years learning to walk across the lake so I could talk to you." And he said, "Welcome, my child." But did you know that the ferry is fifty cents? <laughs> so. In this context, the plant medicine is the fairy. It it takes you it takes you to it takes you where you want to go, and and it's just a tool. Right. For anyone who thinks it's a magic bullet, it's not. It's just a tool. Mm. A tool you can pick up a hammer and build a house. Mm. You can pick up a hammer and bash your brains in. It's a, just a tool. The context matters. So, um, before one of my plant medicine journeys, drinking um, something called ayahuasca, which is uh, DMT. Um, it's an extraordinarily powerful, very potent psychedelic, um, which for me was a ruthlessly introspective experience. Uh, one of the intentions I'd set was, you know, at the start of my career as a, as a central massage therapist, I was more um, rub and tug, mm. if that makes sense, mm. which is one side of the industry. Mm. Um, and I decided that I wanted to uh, expand the breadth and depth of my work. Uh, and that was the intention that I went in with. And what came out was this, um, this, this focus on, uh, on therapy as a, as, a, as a tool for self-development mm. um, for myself. And then to be able to guide people on, that, on their own journeys, whether through sexuality mm. or through something else. Yeah. Wow. That's profound. Thank you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an amazing experience. And yeah. ayahuasca has the um, it, that experience does have the up, um, the potential yeah. to really move people yeah. from one place to the next, yeah. as you say, um, quite quickly. I, I actually, so I just wanted to add a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, um, my wife and I have um, a very strong relationship with the uh, plant. Well, it's, it's actually not a plant, mm. but it is a plant medicine. It's MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy. Mm. Okay. 3,4-methylene dioxide methamphetamine. 
sure. those who want to do chemistry. Wow. Please don't test me. I don't know anything else. Um, and this this medicine is a heart opening medicine. What it does is it it floods your system with dopamine mm. and it allows you uh, it, it's not psycho it's not psychedelic. So you don't see or hear things that aren't there, mm. but you really connect to your emotions. It's like if you've ever read Harry Potter, it's like liquid luck. It's you can say what you want to say, you can do what you want to do. It's really uh, when guided properly, a really deeply therapeutic experience. It's being used all around the world uh, to treat PTSD. Sure. And in our opinion, um, PTSD is uh, uh, too narrow a focus. Mm. Um, trauma isn't just um, rape and abuse and being caught in a war zone. Trauma is what we spoke about earlier, um, a neglectful parent, um, uh, emotional abandonment, that's trauma as well. And MDMA is really a useful tool for that. So that's something that my wife and I are very interested in, um, in terms of helping and facilitating people, uh, couples and individuals on their growth journey. And the, the last thing I wanted to add um, is that it's our very strong belief that mm -hmm. plant medicine, um, therapy, meditation, yoga, whatever tool you're using in the middle, this is a three-step process. Mm -hmm. Step one is preparation. Right. Understanding from an intellectual perspective where you are, understanding what emotions need to come up, like really being present and understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. um, step two is the journey, whether it's um, a tantric massage, whether it's an MDMA uh, facilitated journey, whether it's ayahuasca in a ceremony. And then step three is integration. Right. So I learn what's wrong. I learn, I learn how, to, how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then how do I show up with that knowledge in my day-to-day -day life? Right. How do I integrate? And that's step three, that integration, that's what we spoke about earlier as well, mm -hmm. showing up for yourself every day. Yeah, that's a very, very mature yeah. way of dealing with um, assisted type mm -hmm. uh, integration. Yes, yeah, yes, That's yes. really, really, because I mean, yeah, the, some drugs that you're talking about or medicine that you're talking mm -hmm. about can be abused. 100% people ways. take MDMA at a club Absolutely. or mushrooms uh, at a festival. And yeah. like, okay, you might have a good time. Yeah. In, in truth, you're playing Russian roulette. Correct, 100%. You don't know what could happen if you're taking a substance uh, for the first time or in that set or setting, which are very, very important. That mm. context is very important. If you pick up a power tool without the instructions, you're going to chop your hand off. 100%. I love your attitude. Yeah. I love your, um, your perspective. It's really mature and Sure, 100%. So, Josh, if I can just um, be clear about two things. Essential massage is a very essential experience. Mm -hmm. um, it involves the naked body. Correct. But not necessarily involves the genitalia. Um, so, with sensual massage, generally we would include the, the genitalia in that experience. But of course, um, when taking boundaries into account, some people are uh, are not yet or not ever comfortable with um, with with that. So that's sort of where where the 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 split between um, body work and sensual comes in. Okay. Like I can do a body work treatment, which gives you the same, which gives you a similar physical release from anxiety uh, or from the symptoms of anxiety, not from the anxiety itself. Mm -hmm. That's deeper. Um, and you could have your clothes on. You don't even have to get naked for a bodywork treatment. Right. Um, whereas the central massage, the experience, it's it's more physical. So the like um, it's 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 sensual, but there's also like a sexual element to it. Right. Right. And then a tantric massage yeah. includes the yoni or lingam yes. massage. Um, if there is orgasm as the end result then that's beautiful um if not it's okay but that is the difference in a way yeah so in central massage um uh, an orgasm is great it's mm. re really it's encouraged mm. um in a tantric massage it's it's okay it, it doesn't have to occur but i would um i normally suggest and i normally suggest this more for men than for women because uh women tend to struggle uh, with orgasm in the first place so that's a it's a whole uh, a whole thing that we're, we'd be a whole process we'd be going on um and and with men 
it uh, seems to be a little bit easier to orgasm, to achieve orgasm. So I'd be more, um, I, I'd, I'd put that out there a little bit more with, with, with my male clients that, look, if we're doing Tantra, let's, let's build you to the edge of orgasm, mm. but let's hold on to that energy. Don't, uh -huh, don't I get it. Right. Yeah. So the Tantra is more about expanded orgasm yeah. and, um, an energetic release, energetic emotional release. Energetic release. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. And do you wear clothes during the massages? Yeah. So um, during body work, mm. I'm fully clothed. Mm. Um, during sensual, um, it depends on boundaries. Mm. Depends what um, what the session entails. Couples is also uh, are also different. Um, so with uh, straight couples. Um, a lot of people are coming for like a fantasy experience where they get to watch their wife, uh, the husband's watching their wife being pleasured, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So I might be naked during that. But again, it's very important to 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 check um, what kind of experience. You know, the one thing about sensual massage mm. with couples and with women mm. that's slightly different to the way I work with men is that um, if I've See, you know, uh, depending on boundaries and desires, expectations, and the, the, uh, really, there's a lot that goes into this. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just happen all the time. Or uh, it's it's very important to 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 be very cautious about these these sorts of things and make sure that I'm not crossing any line as a therapist, mm -hmm. which is is becoming you know it, it's a, it's super super important to me. So yeah. the central massage can lead to what I call a shared experience, mm -hmm. which is uh, one in which. Um, my client is a little bit allowed to be a little bit more interactive. Right. Um, and the, the, the benefits I, I think should be obvious, but um, receiving is, is one gift and giving is another gift. So, um, so to, so to create a, a safe space for someone to explore their sexuality for the first time, maybe um, is, is really, really important. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, Generally speaking, I'm I'm, I'm naked, uh, as your original question. Um, uh, with tantra as well, I'm I'm usually naked, you know. Okay. But I do ask beforehand. Are right. you, how how do you feel about nudity, and, and so on? Great, awesome. Josh, this has been incredibly interesting, informative, enlightening, and it's been awesome to um, chat to you on this. Um, platform podcast yeah podcast i love podcasts they're the best i know you do it's the best it's the so best. much fun thank you tracy i really appreciate your time it's and i appreciate your time right. wow it's been so awesome and i know you in so many different contexts but this has been such a pleasure and a privilege to have you on the show thank you i hope you'll have me back without a shadow of a doubt you can have some call-ins uh, how's yeah. it? My name is so-and-so. I've got this problem. Like, <laughs> all right, come, let me talk to you. <laughs> that, that is coming soon. Yeah. Oh, we'll cool. We just have to organize. Uh, yeah. We're just get a, getting off the ground more. Yeah. But again, have an awesome weekend. Awesome. Thank and you, And I Trace. look forward to seeing you again. See you soon. All the best. Yeah.